Welcome back to ATL Day Ones. I am Tanitra, that's Jarvis, and we appreciate you guys for always stopping by to check us out. We appreciate you also going to wherever it is that you get your podcast, whatever platform that is, downloading us and continuing to give us those five-star reviews. We're grateful for it and also grateful that you guys continue to stop by YouTube as well. You guys are subscribing and liking everything on our Locked On Sports Atlanta channel. So again, appreciate you guys for that. And you know what else I can appreciate? The fact that we are just a day away from game day for the Falcons. That is so exciting. Of course, they're going to be in Detroit to take on the Lions, and we already know that Arthur Smith has every intention, unless there is someone who is close to injury, and right, they're still yeah. kind of coming back from that, but unless that person is unto injury <laughs> or whatever, they're going to play tomorrow, and that includes the starters. So the Falcons went ahead and released their first official depth chart of the season late yesterday, and it was interesting, but I was just curious to see if you had any surprises that you saw on that chart you know what to be honest with you kind of just going through the chart you're looking at some of the people you know that were in the starting starting roles and like we've been out there at practice so nothing really surprising right you know as far as who in those starting in the starting lineup but mm -hmm. however when you're trying to get scroll down a little bit t to that reserve spot there were a few names where i was just like mm-hmm and this is one that we've been talking about, right? D'Angelo Malone, yeah. Troy Anderson, and Drake London. All three of those guys were in reserve roles. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm going to take a wild guess, right, as to why that may be the case. I think that when you look at some of the development, some of the, the things that guys have to work on, I think mm -hmm. that – those guys are, you know, may have been put in the category of this is these some guys we're gonna have to continue to develop mm -hmm. and, and and work through some of the little things that, mm -hmm. you know, before we start thrusting them into a starting role. And sure. or it may just be T. Mm -hmm. Arthur Smith said, Hey, you're gonna have to earn your starting spot, you know, and I, mm -hmm. and and Troy Anderson is a guy that I've I've said that really like he been at practice, <laughs> you know. Like what's what's going on? You know, we trying to figure out where he is at practice. You know, like I said, I missed somebody. Um, one uh, somebody on Twitter asked me, "What have I seen from him?" I was like, "I ain't seen anything, Jack." <laughs> so, so, so I, so I, so I think those guys are kind of maybe in that, in that, in that category of mm -hmm. all right. We know that you guys were some high picks. Though that's your first. Your second and your third round pick right there that I just mentioned or named. And we're talking about those guys being in reserve roles right now. I, I think it I think it's a matter of for them, they have to go out and prove it on the field. And and I have no issue with that whatsoever. Yeah, and for me, I didn't really have any surprises. It was more of just kind of looking down the depth chart, particularly in the secondary, because I think mm. we know what that linebacker core looks like, and we already know we're going to have our eye on them to figure out just who they are. But if we think that the secondary is indeed the best part of the defense, then I started breaking that down, and I was like, man, listen, I sure hope the starters stay healthy. Because as good as the starting four are in that secondary and possibly, you know, Isaiah Oliver and nickel packages is as questionable as they are when you start to go deeper on that depth chart. So that was one of the things, not so much a surprise, but it was just sort of like a, a note to self like, hmm, boy, I hope those uh, those starters for the secondary really do stay the course for 17 games in the regular season because not sure that uh, there's really depth at that particular position so before we go into a little rapid fire talking about and getting reaction to marcus vick and his comments on the guys who are going to his be brother michael this, yeah, this, uh, oh, michael i keep saying marcus so forgive you guys for that but as soon as we go on the other side of that we're going to talk a little bit about vick's comments at training day of uh, practice yesterday but first thing is first let's talk about another one of our favorites coffee am no doubt about it when you think about coffee am it is the best small batch roaster in the entire country think about what i just said in the entire country not in the state of georgia because it's right in your backyard it's mm -hmm. right in your backyard you can get some of the freshest coffee that make it right there as soon as you uh, get your order somebody they go start cooking it up what you need and what you're asking for because i know that i absolutely love those kenya k-cups those bad boys i pop that bad boy in 
you start hearing and smelling that, that coffee brewing and I'm like oh my god yes I cannot wait to get my hands on a, cu a cup because you know I be needing my stuff I start my days early to five o'clock in the morning I'm in the gym I'm trying to get it in and I need me a pick me up and I think coffee a.m. is the place you need to go now how can I get my hands on it, Jarvis? Yeah, you say it in that type of voice. I know how you I know how you guys talk. So here's what you do. Go to coffeeam.com backslash locked on and drop in the coupon code box. And you're gonna get 15% off all coffee teas and gift sets. All you gotta do is drop in the code locked on in the coupon code box. Um, and you're gonna get 15% off. And the website again is coffeeam.com backslash locked on. Drop that locked on code in there and you'll get 15% off. Go to Coffee AM today. Yes, and you guys know I love Coffee AM's tea. And speaking of tea, Michael Vick brought the tea at practice yesterday when he was asked the question about QBs. So what I'm going to do, Jarvis, is break down each section of what he said in that quote. And let's get some quick rapid fire reaction. So okay. first part of the quote was this. It's definitely Marcus's job. Marcus should be the starter. I would think that he would be the starter. Go. <laughs> um, I think Mike is right on point. Like he's almost hit, like he's been around uh, since 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 um since Marcus started. You know, you know, came into this, this situation right because we know that Matt Ryan was traded away and they immediately signed Marcus Mario because they wanted to have a veteran and like I said, they want to win games. They want to win games now. They're not trying to try out out a young pup. So I'm not surprised at all that uh, Mike had came to that conclusion. Yeah, and he really has shown he's had a really strong training camp. And look, that's all we have to go on at this point. So Indeed. based on what we've seen just in terms of him commanding the offense and really being able to work amongst, you know, Drew Dahlman and Matt Hennessy, so you get a, a different center almost every day. He's right, yeah. And even as they're uh, getting into, you know, more of the deep ball threats, he's not maybe connected on that, but you can see that arm strength is there. So I thought that was very encouraging too. Now, another chunk of what Michael Vick said yesterday, quote, Desmond, meaning Desmond Ritter, would have to do some amazing things to overcome Marcus Mariota being the starter. Uh, Michael Vick has been listening to our show um, <laughs> because we know we we know there were Desmond Ritter kind of pivoted from you know from what he said initially you know coming in like yeah I'm trying to be the star that's all you heard like everybody talking about yeah QB one and all that good stuff mm -mm, mm -mm. now as you start to see you know TAs come along and then you start mm -hmm. ramping up for you know he had little mini camps and mandatory minis and then you start getting into the training camp you ain't hear it anymore. Right. Oh, he said, I'm just trying to work out, you know, trying mm -hmm. to learn and trying to make sure I do what I need to do in order to yeah. be a better quarterback. You start hearing that conversation start to change, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, I think Mike totally gets it. He understands what it's like to come in as a rookie because at the end of the day, if you're not a first-round guy, which mm -hmm. essentially you're given that spot when they call your name and give that card and run it up to, to, to the podium on, on draft day, but if you're a third-round guy, you have to be amazing like he said i use his words you have to be amazing in order to take someone's spot that they brought in to be the starter yes he also said but at the same time he gets a chance to sit back and learn from a veteran meaning ritter learns from mariota just to have a season with no pressure and i think that's extremely important for a young rookie but marcus at the helm this team should be in good shape on offense um yeah, I mean, I think I think there's n nothing really to add to that because when you think about like the development and what the the Falcons are looking for, I think that you know he had Ritter has the qualities, right? Mm -hmm. Like I don't think the Falcons would have drafted him they, if they didn't feel that he had the qualities to be a starter at some point in the in the near future. So I I think that for him to kind of kind of have like a red shirt year, so to speak. You know, barring any injury for Marcus Mariota, I think that they'll be right apart. They'll be part of the Atlanta Falcons plan going forward. Yeah, and that's going to be the critical piece injury, whether or not that actually happens during the season. And Michael Vick himself said that he wishes that he would have had that opportunity to just sit under somebody's tutelage 
and just kind of soak it all in. And then you think about on that opposite side, Patrick Mahomes and how much that helped him just to be able to sit and learn for that amount of time that he did. So again, it'll be interesting to see, but yeah, as far as we can see right now, looks like QB1 is settled. It also looks like a company that tried to settle in the old world didn't quite do so well with that. And also, hmm, we down here think one of our teams is on point, but it appears that some national media think they're on point too. So we're going to talk about it in For the Culture when we get back. 